Australia, an entire generation has been waiting for this. The biggest star maker on the planet. Oh, God. Is back. But you're 16 from Darwin. No one knew their names. Hello, Kelly. Jennifer Hudson from Chicago. Until Idol found them. I'm Adam Lambert, and I'm from Hollywood, California. Now, we're going to every corner of the country. Leaving no stone unturned. No bridge uncrossed. No chance unseen. To find your next Australian Idol. You and I, you and I, we're like diamonds in the sky. You're a shooting star, I see a vision of ecstasy. When you hurt me, I'm alive, like diamonds in the sky. I knew that we'd become one right away. Every dream, right away. every heartache. Every triumph. Australia, the wait is over. Live television is back. This is Australian Idol. Australian Idol is back for season eight, technically, but the first season on Channel 7. And that promo just shows that Seven are going to be real serious about it. I will offer the hardest working people, at least in the promo concept, are the drone pilot and the guy who had to drive that Australian, Australian Idol truck everywhere because jeepers, they got around the country. They got to see lots of different places. Um, it's, it's massive. I've seen the first two episodes of this, of course. For those unfamiliar with the format, it's a big cattle call, turn up, audition. Uh, you get to stand in front of the judges and sing your heart out. Um, you may be great. You may be not very good. You may be deluded and think you're great and you're not very good. Um, the edit brings us together, all of that mix of people. Uh, and it is pretty amazing. The four judges are front and centre. And for the judges, we've got Megan Trainer from the US, Australia's Amy Shark, uh, Harriet Connick, I'm sorry, Harry Connick, uh, Jackson Jive Jr., uh, who understandably taught us a lesson about blackface and its history, and Kyle Sanderlands. Mm. I have to admit that I, I watched a bit of the earlier iteration of Idol and uh, wasn't overly enamoured, particularly when Kyle started to pop up more frequently. Now, I'm told reliably by people at No Kyle that he's a great guy. Uh, he's just very frank and that his public persona is not close to who he is. Look, I, I'd have to say, if you're an anti-Kyle person, this is probably as close to nice Kyle bubbling through into his public persona because he's quite nice sometimes. And he is uh, certainly frank and doesn't mince words when he comes to stuff that he thinks is great or, or he people he think aren't very good. He's certainly very entertaining for Megan Trainer. She loves him. She's seated next to him and she enjoys all of them. There's some great banter. That's pretty good. Amy Shark's fine. Harry Connick Jr. seems a little bit disinterested. Maybe he was fresh off the plane or oh, I don't know, but maybe it was long days. And that's what we see when we get to some of the big auditions that we have line up. Um, you wouldn't know until 20 minutes in that there were hosts. And for this iteration, it is Ricky Lee and Scott Tweedy. Ricky Lee, of course, a former Australian Idol alum. And just by the way, in that trailer, they show a whole bunch of people that have been previous uh, Australian, well, Idol winners. We only get two Aussies lined up and they didn't even show all of them. Casey Donovan won and she's not listed there. Um, we also didn't get the people that were close but actually got decent careers out of it. Think Shannon, What About Me, Noel, uh, or even Anthony Kalia, who's doing massive business still. There's lots of people who got their start on Idol that are still, Rob Millsy Mills, musical, you know, Australian musical royalty nowadays, uh, theatre royalty. Uh, he's doing a great job. So there's all of those sorts of things. We didn't need Carrie Underwood and Adam Lambert and that stuff thrown in. That's Americans, not us. But nonetheless, um, there's not enough of the the hosts, Ricky Lee and, and Scott, even in the green room, in the pre-stuff. But they do pop up. But it's I, I get we'll see more of them when we get to the later stages. And later stages, just by the way, first round of auditions get us to the cattle call, get us to 50 the, the, the judges select the top 50. That top 50 gets tut, cut down by them to 24 and then to 12. And after that, we go to live shows. 
just like we used to. So that's why Kyle was making a big deal in the promo about live television is back. I mean, we'll find out how live it is when we get there. It'll be, you know, sort of on a short delay, but I'd expect if they're calling it live, it's live, not as live as in recorded as live. But we'll see where we land in it. Um, It's fun. And uh, I really enjoyed the effort, and they have poured a lot of effort into making this look good. Warning, if you are someone that um, has a small bladder, the first segment runs for 24 minutes. That's a lot of television before you get to get up and go we. Uh, so just be prepared for that. Uh, one small criticism, I didn't like the, the staged fake crowd stuff outside the venues. Is like, oh, here come the judges walking in. Blah, blah. One deep. It's basically two lines of people that they spread apart and said, hold up this sign that we made and shout and look like you're happy about seeing, you know, Kyle walk in as a judge. It's not, it, it's it's bad producering. Get either lots more people or one side it so that they're two or three deep. Um, don't show us uh, two lines of people and make us think like there's a crowd there. Um, yeah. I'm a massive fan of the delusional audition, the person who thinks that they're great and they are not, and that you that they reveal that when they sing, and how polite some of the judges are and how impolite some of the judges are. And you'll be surprised who can be impolite sometimes. And it's, often it's just them calling it straight. They're not being disrespectful. They're just, that's not, you can't sing. Um, it is it is enjoyable. If you are a fan of the format, you will be not disappointed because it is really, really good. Seven have done a great job on this. It is slick. It is well-produced. There's some great nods to the past. Hello, uh, Osha, formerly known as Andrew G, and his sidekick, James Matheson, who are fresh off Channel V, I think, at that point, to host the first seasons of Australian Idol. Um, is it overhyped? Yeah. Seven have been absolutely smashing the promos through the cricket and across January, even before that. It is what it is. That's how reality TV works now. I can tell you that I'd expect this is going to be a massive series for Seven. And if you're a fan, you'll want to tune in Monday, the 30th of January, to see the first episode of Australian Idol. It runs three nights a week on Seven. So it's Monday the 30th at 7.30 on 7 and 7 plus. Australian Idol season eight is going to be massive. 